okay. So basically your argument here with James is that he's just saying that, you know, your faith is dead if you don't have any works because that would show that if God's working in you, there should be works that come out of you. And this is what James was supposedly talking about when he wrote James chapter 2. And the problem is, is that when you get down to verse 21, it says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that, that Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as right, righteousness. So here we're saying here is that Abraham was justified. It says, was not Abraham our father justified by works? It doesn't say that he was ju that faith justified him. He said he was justified by his works because what happened is because he believed, he responded in works, and those works justified him. You see, even, any way you try to spin it, and I know you're playing Twister with it, you're trying to make it fit and make it, well, this is what, this is what James was talking about. You see that it, it, it can't work. It, it, says, it, it says, what good is it, my, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? So what does that mean? Maybe he doesn't have faith. But when it says that Abraham was justified by sacrificing his son and not by faith alone, and when it says that faith alone doesn't save you, that's a clear contradiction. And I know you can try to squirm to get out of it, because I know, I know how to argue this the same way everybody else does. But if you really look at it right on your face, you know, right on its face, you see that, that somehow or another, you don't see a clear message like you do in Peter. If you just look at 1 Peter compared to James, you see a major difference, you know. Here it is, blessed be the God and, our, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfaded, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last day, time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. You look at the contrast between a book that's written about grace and it's all over the page, and you look at James when he doesn't even mention. He, he doesn't, he, he says that, that your faith, uh, you don't have faith unless you have works. Um, basically, that, that's, and, and, and I can see it. I can see you going, oh, I don't want to hear it. You know, I, I, can, I can explain it away. I can, I can show you that, that what James was talking about was that, you know, faith is dead because if you don't have works, then there's no faith in you at all. But it, it doesn't account for, for these scriptures that say that because Abraham believed God, it was counted into righteousness, but first his faith had to be completed by what he, what he did. That's clearly... That's clearly works. When it says Abraham our father, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son on the altar? You see that faith was active along with works and faith was completed by his works. Faith? Wait a minute, isn't Jesus Christ the author and finisher of our faith? And aren't we supposed to put our faith in his works? Didn't he say it is finished? You see, I don't think, I think that what's happening here is that you're going back to all the old arguments because I can gloss right over it and I can try to make it fit, but it doesn't. Thanks.